Hello and welcome everyone. So we are discussing a structural performance during earthquake and this is part 2 video. In part 1 we have discussed the force which affects the performance of a structure which is called inertial force. And that inertial force is transferred from the roof slabs to the soil ultimately. And there are different architectural features that affects the transfer of this inertial force due to different features size of building, horizontal and vertical layout of the building or the adjacency of building. So due to the, those factors, the building performance is severely affected. Now in this video, we are going to discuss twisting of the building, which also affects the performance of the building during earthquake. So before understanding that, uh, let us try to understand the analogy of a rope swing with a single story building. So the rope swing we all must have used in our childhood plays when we go in the parks or the gardens there we see such rope swings okay a rope swing has one uh, cradle this is the cradle okay and this cradle is hanging from two ropes hung from the branch of a tree now this uh, system of swing can be compared with a single story building both swing back and forth when shaken horizontally a single story building shake uh, when there is earthquake forces okay and there is maximum displacement at the level of cradle in the swing and floor in the case of building and the ropes provide the stiffness okay similarly in this case of building these columns provide the stiffness so the only difference is that uh, in these two analogy is that the rope swing is hung from the top and the single story building is being raised from the ground okay so you can imagine a mirror image like this and if you take a three cradle swing system this can be compared with a three story building okay the only difference is that the swing is hanged from the branch of the tree and the building is being raised from the ground okay so from this same analogy if you try to understand if a boy is sitting closer to one of the rope if he is sitting very close to one of the rope and if we try to swing the shake the uh, this uh, cradle back and forth then what happens there is development of an twist twist is an uh, rotation along the perpendicular uh, to the perpendicular to the uh, plane of the motion of the swing so this twist is an extra angle that is getting developed okay and this is the angle of the twist so this twist is being developed only because of uneven distribution of the mass in on the cradle similarly in the case of buildings if there is non-uniform distribution of masses like on one side there is heavy side of building and another side is lighter then due to this uneven distribution of mass surely there will develop a swing a twist and this twist will affect the performance of the structure during earthquake ground shaking similarly one more reason that caused twisting of the building that is uneven length of the columns so if you take an example of this case in which the branch of the tree is raised and due to this the length of the rope which you see here is this length and here is this length so both length of the ropes are not equal so when we try to swing the cradle again there is development of a twist okay because there is uh, difference in the length of the columns or the ropes similarly in case of buildings made on or constructed on a slopey ground or in hilly region uh, the columns can have difference in the length this side columns are lo longer than the columns on this side so these buildings will not perform very adequately during earthquake ground shaking because there will be development of twist and in twist the columns on these side will be severely affected okay 
similarly in case if there is one side open ground story or one side there is a soft story then that side will develop twisting during earthquake ground shaking okay so what happens in twisting because you can see uh, what is happening in this case in this case is the having unequal vertical member if a building is having unequal vertical member distribution they also cause the building to twist about a vertical axis so if you take this example of the building in this case there are columns here here and here but here is only wall and wall so vertical member is unevenly distributed so basically these columns will be severely affected due to development of twist and the building as you can see the building is rotating about this axis vertical axis so these columns will undergo maximum deflection so similarly in this case if you take there are columns this line and in this row also there is column but in this side there is only wall so again there is uneven distribution of vertical members so again there will be development of twist similarly in case of uh, mass distribution uneven mass distribution again there is twist development as we have seen okay and during twist development what happens some columns like these columns they will undergo maximum displacement than these columns so these columns are more vulnerable to damage okay during uh, shaking of the ground so that's why the twisting of building also affects its performance now what can improve the performance of the structure during earthquake ground shaking what factor and that factor is summarized in one property that is ductility till now we have only considered one factor in rcc1 or rcc2 that is uh, strength we want our structure to have sufficient strength that is our structure must be quite robust but we don't want our structure to be rigid no we don't want such a structure we want a structure which should be flexible means it will have some ductility okay or it will flexibility is what flexibility is inverse of stiffness all right flexibility and stiffness are reciprocal of each other all right so ductility is the ability to undergo distortion or deformation which is called bending without resulting in complete breakage or failure so unlike brittle material they can undergo distortion without any breakage or failure sudden failure especially so it undergo uh, keep on undergoing distortion and by undergoing such distortion it what does it do it stores the energy which is coming from the external forces it absorb that energy it stores in the form of potential energy which is released slowly gradually uh, when it comes in its original position or original shape so we want our structure to be both strength good strength and good ductility so ductility is very very important for earthquake resistant design and it is far more desirable for a building to sustain a limited amount of deformation than for it to suffer a complete breakage failure we don't want a complete breakage failure without giving a warning rather we will uh, we want a structure to give some limited amount of deformation so that we can have sufficient warning to evacuate a place or to make retrofitting in the building okay if required and ductility of a structure is in fact one of the most important factor affecting its earthquake performance that's what we have summarized so if we take building materials building materials can be of two types either they can be ductile or they can be brittle now uh, steel what is steel steel is completely ductile material whereas concrete and masonry are brittle uh, concrete and masonry both are good in compression just like you can see in this figure under compression they perform very well but in case of tension 
there is development of cracks so they are very weak in tension okay and they uh, develop cracks at even a smaller tensile load so they are brittle material so in case of concrete to increase its tensile strength we add reinforcement and that becomes rcc okay so in uh, if we do a tension test on a material for a brittle material at maximum force they undergo sudden failure okay and there uh, the amount of energy being stored is very less okay whereas in case of a ductile material even at maximum force they keep on being uh, elongated and finally they undergo failure after undergoing a large amount of elongation or deformation and they store a significant amount of energy in the form of potential energy okay so in case of brittle collapse of the building there is sudden failure okay fear as in a structure which is earthquake resistant design is being done in which uh, structure is showing ductile performance they perform very well even under shaking of the ground horizontal movement of the roofs so such building perform very nice during earthquakes so we are showing here two extremes the ductile as well as the brittle okay so buildings must be designed like the ductile chain now this is the golden line what is this ductile chain so a chain this is a chain a chain uh, we know this uh, from in chemistry also we have heard this rds rate determining step rds is what slowest step okay similarly in physics we all have must have heard the chain now chain fails at its weakest link okay weakest link now all of the links here are brittle in case of this original chain but the weakest link we want to make our weakest link even the out of all the brittle links the most weakest link we want to make the most weakest link to be ductile now what is the benefit in making weakest link ductile because even if you load the chain what will happen the ductile link will be stretched by yielding before getting uh, breakages whereas the brittle links will not yield and this will undergo maximum deformation without getting failed up to maximum load up, up to its capacity so uh, the uh, so that the other brittle link could not be failed so this elongation will give us sufficient warning that no now the structure has to be repaired or structure has to be evacuated the weakest link is showing deformation and the other links will remain safe they will not fail because they are not the weakest link so we want to make the building designed as the ductile chain and in ductile chain what is the property the most weakest link is ductile okay so in a building there are two types of element one is beam and other is column now which one is most critical beam or column which one is most critical columns are most critical because failure of columns will lead to global failure what will happen if the column of the foundation will fail then the entire structure will fail but beam are not critical and failure of beams will be local failures means if a beam fails here so still the columns are intact and you can construct the beam a new beam again so beam failure is not so much critical but column failures are critical they should not fail at any cost so uh, if we want to make our uh, structure uh, which one should be stronger beams or columns which one should be kept stronger of course we will uh, desire a structure in which columns are strong in comparison to beam so be not that intentionally we want to make weaker beams but in comparison to beams columns 
should be stronger so that's why i am writing these relative terms stronger column weaker beams so those structures are preferred in which beams are weaker than the columns not that the reverse one in which columns are weak and beams are stronger okay so the beams when they are made the weakest link and not the column and uh, this can be appropriately achieved by sizing the members and providing correct amount of steel reinforcement in them so after understanding this uh, ductile chain mechanism in which the beams are made weaker and columns are made stronger so let us take the reverse case first of all when columns are weak and beams are stronger so as i have said in case of ductile chain weakest link weakest link is made ductile okay now in case of this structure our weakest link is what weakest link is column are weak so column has to made ductile now what i have done i have just made this all three columns ductile in just one story not in every story i have made ductile okay in just ground story we have made all the columns ductile and ductile means even if they will undergo this much deformation okay so this much deformation will be added to the entire level of the structure isn't it when the structure deforms then the entire structure will move like this so even the entire displacement is being added even if we just make the columns of one story ductile so the displacement is added up to the top so at collapse they will not show large deformation they will not show because in this case only the collapse will happen at a smaller displacement only the collapse will happen because columns are getting failed but in case of beams when beams are made weaker weaker beams so as per the ductile chain theory weaker link has to be made ductile so when beams are ductile columns will remain intact and you can see the beams are made ductile like this okay so when there is displacement due to earthquake shaking then all the beams will shake like this now there is uniform gradation uniform gradation in displacement and it is showing specifically larger displacement at the collapse during earthquake shaking so we want of course larger displacement at collapse rather than a smaller displacement so that we can have sufficient warning and this larger displacement at collapse shows that this structure is more ductile okay so that's why we prefer stronger column weaker beams so that's how the structure can be made more ductile and there are much more properties by which we can make our structure ductile and ductility improves the performance of a structure during earthquake and many of those things we have discussed under the title uh, ductile detailing of reinforcement and we will be now discussing uh, on the past lessons from previous earthquakes in the upcoming videos so this is all uh, for on the structural performance during earthquakes from my side so we will meet in the next video till that stay tuned and stay safe thank you